Okay. So good morning and welcome to the Natiza 101 webinar. My name is Michelle Brazo and I'll be your host today. Today's webinar is a perfect introduction to IBM Natiza solutions for our data warehousing and advanced analytic applications. This 45-minute session will provide you with a concise overview of Natiza's appliance solutions, including information about the solution's architecture, performance characteristics, deployment models, and use cases. Uh, the presentation will be followed by a 15-minute Q&A. Uh, your phone lines are on mute today, so I ask that you enter your questions into the chat window you see on the side of your screen. Um, our presenter today is Dwayne Snow. He's an Atiza evangelist and data warehouse and OLTP competitive analyst at IBM Natiza. Dwayne has worked for IBM for the past 21 years. In that time, he's spent a number of years working on DB2 for Linux, Unix, and Windows, and has written eight books and numerous articles on DB2, and has presented at conferences around the world. He recently started to work with his new colleagues from Natiza in the product management and product marketing arena, and is hoping to write his first Natiza book very soon. So we want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to talking to you and answering your questions. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to Dwayne. Thanks, Michelle. Um, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you just fine. Okay, perfect. So thanks thanks again, everybody, for coming. So again, my name is Dwayne Snow, and I'm going to take you through an introduction to the um, IBM Natiza Data Warehouse Appliances. So Michelle, if you can jump to the next slide. So what this what this question is, it's really a rhetorical question, and but the reason I'm asking it is the the way people use Google today is really also the way that we use analytic and warehouse appliances. What we do with Google and what we do with analytic appliances is we ask a question, and the answer to that question will determine what the next question is going to be, and then the next, and the next, and then sometimes we'll then reset and start over. But so it's sort of like when you're looking at a a report. You're looking at, you know, give me the, all the sales for North America, and then you say, give me the sales for the state of Pennsylvania, and then the, you know, for all the card, you know, Chevrolet dealers. So it really, sometimes it's just drilling down, getting narrower and narrower and narrower, or it's, you know, you ask a question, give me, you know, all the red barns. You're looking for those. You might be planning travel, and then you look at where they are, and you try to do it. But what happens with a data warehouse is if you don't have the proper indexes, then the first scan might take a minute. Then the next scan might take five minutes. The next one might take three seconds. You don't get consistency. And you also need a whole bunch of people that, you know, you have to be constantly creating new indexes, new aggregates, in order to maintain good performance in a traditional data warehouse. So that's sort of this rhetorical question. You know, if it took three days and you had to give up seven people to Google to get your response time, would you use it? And, and the answer is no. People need a response fast, and they don't want to spend a lot of time and effort to get it. And really, that same correlation goes to the power that the IBM Natiza appliance brings to data warehousing and analytics. Um, so, so really, when we're talking warehousing and analytics, say we're talking about big data. So, Michelle, if you can jump to the next slide. So, big data. When when we talk the IBM big data, big data comes in. You know, there's three components of big data universally. There's extreme volume, which Natiza handles perfectly fine. There's um, extreme velocity, which Natiza can handle. And then there's variety. And when you talk variety and structured and unstructured data, you might be looking more at a Hadoop platform. But with Hadoop, what you do is you go out and you, you mine for gold. Most of unstructured data, think of Twitter, Facebook, it's all noise. You don't really, you know, not much of it is marketable data. Not much of it is stuff that you can take and, and find value in it. So when you find the the signal in the noise, you want to then take it and move it into your warehouse for for refining. So let's think of, you know, go to Hadoop, look for gold nuggets, look for flakes of gold, and then move them into the refinery. And the refinery is your analytic and warehousing platform. But, you know, big data is all the news. And, you know, we can look at, you know, on the right-hand side here, Information Week and, um, you know, competing on analytics, those are written by techno guys. But, you know, The Economist is, you know, it's not a technology paper. It's not a technology um, publication. But they're talking, you know, data is everywhere. And you need to choose a platform. When you're building a platform for analytics and words, you need to choose the platform that can handle the extreme volumes, 
and can handle it without you having to be there constantly hand-holding it, constantly monitoring it, and constantly tuning it. And that's what the Natiza platform brings to you. So when we, if we jump to the next slide, it's really what we're talking about here is, you know, businesses are demanding answers faster, but the questions are getting more and more complex. Whether it be fraud detection on your credit cards, whether it be how do I optimize the distribution of energy. Where I live now, um, energy has become deregulated. So I live in Pennsylvania, and now I can go and buy my energy from a bunch of different companies. But it's all transferred by the, the you know, the PICO, which is our uh, Pennsylvania energy company. So they have to control, you know, how do they get it from supplier to consumer in the most efficient way. So they don't want to be hopping all over theirs and increasing their costs. But, again, it's answers to complex questions in less and less and less time. Um, you know, data is being generated in massive, massive volumes, whether it be, you know, Twitter, um, Facebook, all, all these, you know, different social media sites, whether it be stock exchanges. If you look at the New York Stock Exchange, it's generating typically on an average day about 4 billion trades. And a trade generates at least two stock ticks. And the tick is, you know, a person saying, I'll sell at this price, and somebody else saying, I'll buy at that same price. And, you know, somebody might want to sell a 1,000. You could have one person buy a 1,000. You could have four people buy 250 each. And then your data actually generating five ticks. So we're talking at least 8 billion records per day being generated on the stock exchange. We start talking about, you know, the, all of the genomic, you know, genomic data, all of the health data that's being generated day by day by day. It's just becoming more and more and more. And what we see is the capacity to garner data, garner information, garner the, the signal out of that. What, what we're really getting is dumber from the, based on the, you know, the information we have. It's hard to analyze it unless we choose the right platform. So if we want to jump to the next slide, Michelle. So the traditional data data warehouse, you know, I'm talking about before Nteza, was it wasn't designed for big data. Traditional databases that, you know, other companies took, whether it be um, Oracle, SQL Server, they took an old TP database. They added a little bit of extra stuff, you know, not, you know sequential I.O., big block I.O., to try and make it, warehousing, you know, capable of warehousing. So they weren't really designed for, you know, from the ground up to be able to handle these large, large, massive data volumes. Um, and they, because they were designed for OLTP, in an OLTP system, you run the 